This podcast is brought to you by Blue Guardian, the prop firm that lets you trade with EAs or any style you like at any time. So I've grown that account now to 250,000. For instance, now I'm running on half a year of green days, which is my absolute record. I've never had wow. results like that. I use ICT concept 2022. However, I've adapted it to myself and it just clicked. Sooner than I saw, I didn't see all of it. I saw 32 videos, especially video. It was everything just clicked. It was like a, a one moment where I was like, wow, how have I not been seeing this? Episode 232. Folks, before we jump into this interview with Yanis, the conscious trader, I do want to tell you that we did shoot a video where he breaks down his trading strategy, which is highly unique. Uh, and that is coming up on the YouTube channel. So hit subscribe if you want to get access to that coming up this week. Uh, other things going on here on the channel, we've got 13 live streams hitting the air. We've got Lord Banks back on the live streams. We've got Ethan Garland, who was on the show a couple of weeks ago. So these guys are over there doing it live. So if you do want to see what they do, along with these other traders who are taking the Blue Guardian 100K challenge, then please jump over there and check it out. Um, last but not least, before we get into the show, if you do want to automate your trading, go and check out my Robot Builders Club and some other automated solutions down underneath the video or in the podcast description. Enough from me. Let's hear from my sponsor and get on with this thing. Our sponsor, Blue Guardian, funds their traders with up to 400k and allows you to get your first withdrawal and refund after just 14 days, giving you a serious edge. With hundreds of positive reviews on Trustpilot, 4.8 stars and a discord of 15k active members, Blue Guardian is one of the most trusted prop firms in the industry right now. Check out the link and coupon in the description to get 10% off your next Blue Guardian evaluation. All right, folks, here we are on trading. We've got Yanis, the conscious trade day trader here on the show, all the way over there in Greece. Welcome to the show, Yanis. Nice to be here. I've seen a lot of your of your videos, so it's good to be on one of them. Well, now I've look, I've seen some of yours. So, um, and I know you did uh, you did learn from one of my X guess, which is uh, well, I won't spoil it for the listeners; they can find out. Um, so, we're going to start off by finding out all about your journey. And I know you've got quite an interesting journey, and you've made, been able to achieve pretty quick success compared to a lot of uh, people out there in the trading arena. And uh, I want to hear all about that as well. So, let's dive into how it all started. What was your background, and when, the, why did you eventually find trading? So, I never thought that I'll be a day trader. To be honest, I, it all started. Um, my background is in elite sport. I've been to uh, four Olympic games as a performance data analyst, um, started with London, went to Rio, um, Tokyo. Uh, so we had some uh, crazy good times as a performance data analyst, but eventually uh, it has its toll because in elite sport, you become a big family and you're traveling around the world. Uh, it's a great job. But when you have kids and family, suddenly those six months away are quite a bit of time. And I know you have kids, so you know what I'm talking about, yeah, <laughs> how, yeah. how hard that would be. Uh, but from there, I was looking for something to do that I can be at home to spend time with my son, uh, to be able to travel wherever we want. We're currently living in Bali, um, even though now we're in Greece for some personal reasons. Um, but that was one and I did enjoy a lot looking at the charts and reading the charts and um, coming from a data background. It was quite familiar to me. Uh, but falling into day trading was out of luck because I had an issue with one of my accountants, with one of our balance sheets uh, when he was about to pay me. I, I didn't understand some numbers that were coming through. And I was adamant. He was, he was throwing some accounting words that I didn't understand. And I was like, I think this is wrong. I'm being done here. So I ended up doing a course in accounting <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> to find, just to find out what he was talking about. Uh, and I was right. He had put me in the wrong bracket. So I ended up getting all my salary back. That was my best trade at, at the time. <laughs> right. Uh, and from there, when you do a Udemy course, it suggests other courses. So and another course that was suggested after that was investment uh, investment investment banking, yeah. which was not day trading, but it was kind of like, it was talked about investing and even talked about um, crypto, what crypto is and stocks and shares and bonds and so on. But that got me interested. And um, after that, I did a, another course online and fell into, um, I found the Scruffy Trader. I think he's been on the show as well. He has indeed. Uh, so I uh, joined his Discord. I learned a lot from the Scruffy uh, trader, Gary, and 
the most success has come after meeting Scruffy and eventually finding out about ICT, who absolutely changed my my life around uh, as this has become now my full time job. And uh, and did you when you found out about ICT was it through the free mentorship? Because I know it was quite recently, so it could well have been. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I, I was again another lucky moment. Uh, I didn't know he he wasn't accepting mentorships. I knew that, but he decided to do the 2022 free mentorship, which is 42 videos on YouTube, um, breaking down pretty much a setup that he would be willing to give to his daughter to trade, as he says in the video. Yeah. Um, and it just clicked. Soon as I saw, I didn't see all of it. I saw 32 videos, um, especially 18th video. It was everything just clicked. It was like a, a, a one moment where I was like, wow, have I, how have I not been seeing this all this time? All right. The 18th video. I don't even think I got there. I, I did start watching it earlier this year. And I got to the, and I had a real bad sort of plane issue where I, where I was stuck in an airport and I downloaded just up to episode eight and I never got past it because then I was, I just, life just got in the way. Um, but I did get the first eight and even that was like a, a bit of a game changer. Okay. Episode 18. Remember that folks. I have to admit, I have to admit, I did fall asleep and I have to rewatch a lot of them. <laughs> and I think it is a trend with a lot of people who watch the 2022 mentorship. You kind of, it takes, it's, it's a process going through it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so so that's how you got into trading. Uh, I mean, probably the, one of the most unusual paths to find trading is through a Udemy course on accounting. Uh, I mean, a couple of things that, that, that you talked about. I mean, was there anything from your days as a you know sports analyst uh, or elite athlete analyst that you have bought into trading uh, in this day and age and anything that's helped you? Uh, one of the biggest things is, I think that is my sort of edge in the market is being to recognize patterns uh, in the market. I don't, I'm not a pattern trader, but within sort of the ICT way of trading and my way I'm doing my um, risk management being able to recognize things that's happened in the past, and I've seen it before, that has um, informed my everyday process. Uh, with with when elite sport, you just do a lot of repetitive things. So if I'm analyzing an athlete, I would analyze them in the World Championships, in the European Championships, in the Olympics, four years. So a lot, a lot of video and a lot of th- trying to uh, find what his his edge. So a lot of time spending on looking for uh, meticulously looking for something on video. I think that has helped me with the charts. Okay. That's interesting. And and were there any sort of famous athletes and stuff that you ended up no rubbing shoulders with over there? Uh, Well, doing uh, a canoeing athletes, obviously Joe Clark, who won the gold medal in the team GB. I'm actually, I was one of his ashes in the, in the wedding as well. He's uh, he's a good buddy of mine. Um, uh, I had, I was eating next to you, say in Bolt. Uh, when I was waiting for and, that name to come up somehow, I don't know why. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was Usain Bolt. I'm sure he's a- <laughs> <laughs> he's on there. He's on there. I might have to give you that photo so you can share it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, a lot of basketball guys who I I'm a huge fan of, uh, like uh, Kevin Durant. And Seriously? Uh, wow. yeah, literally, literally a lot of people. Uh, it would be hard to name them all. It yeah, would be hard. yeah. No, let's not go through the through the list. Um, okay, so so you so you you stumbled into uh, ICT the, up to video eighteen. Yeah, the scruffy trader knowledge in the background. I mean, what what was sort of going on in that time in the trading world for you? I mean, what were you doing? What were you trying? How were things going? Scruffy was someone who changed my mindset around trading. Up, up to that point. Didn't have an like everyone. When you start trading, you think you have a bit of excess success in the first few weeks, and you're like, "Oh my god, this is so easy! Uh, I'm going to be a millionaire within a few weeks." And then suddenly, the market just goes back and says, "No, that's not how the how the market works," and it takes it all back. But what I liked about Scruffy at the time, I was lucky because I was trading the uh, DAX uh, at the time. I wasn't doing forex. And that's how I found him because he, he has a lot of video on the DAX, um, at the indices, the German indices, if uh, people don't know about that. Um, and I, he had a different approach. He was, he was trading a lot smaller numbers because on YouTube, you see like these thousands and thousands of trades. 
uh, uh, profits and losses. But if you don't have the capital, that can be like very foreign mm. uh, as a starting when you're starting into that journey. Whereas Scrappy will be showing like $200, $300 uh, pounds every day. So I was like, okay, that that's something that I can relate to. Um, and he was talking very logically about the market and how you can do um, sort of use a pound average approach to uh, build up positions rather than going in full size. Um, and all that helped me sort of create, um, to, to look at the markets differently, be a bit more patient uh, with setups. Um, but I still did get a few hits uh, during that period. I did pass the uh, challenge of, uh, and I got funded with the Scruffy trader and the way he he approaches trading. And I would say I still, a lot of the stuff that I do comes from him as well. Uh, but now it's a little bit more my entries uh, when I open the screens, uh, especially on daily biases and fair value gaps. It's um, that's that's my bread and butter now. Righty ho. Okay. So, and, and that transition was like, literally you watched the ICT mentorship and you're like, okay, I've got to be doing this stuff and kind of park the, the scruffy approach for now. How did you merge the two together? Um, and sorry, and also I, how, how did you navigate the uh, free mentorship to get the most out of it? Cause I know there's so much in there. There's so many different things, ways you could approach it. It's almost like you have to come up with your way at the end of it. Um, from what I understand, because I only got to episode eight, but how did you b- break it down? I, I think the biggest um, take up for any sort of trader is that you can't be, you can't copy any trader out there. You can't be, um, <clears throat> you can't copy me. You can't do what I do and make money. I, I'm sure uh, people see this and they're like, oh, here's the new strategy. I'll just jump on that. And it will give me everything that I ever wanted. It doesn't work like that because you don't know how I react to certain conditions in the market psychologically. Um, what am I seeing? We, we have even childhood trauma comes to play when you're looking at charts and it doesn't need to be big trauma. It might be a minor neglection from a parent. It might be uh, a bit of a tiny bullying going on at school that it gives you and builds up habits that they then come into your psychology when you're coming with, let's say in a bit of a drawdown. Mm. Um, so all these factors come into play. You have to become your own trader. You can't copy Scruffy. You can't copy ICT. You can't copy me, Cam, anyone. You have to become your own trader. And the way you do that is you pick up ideas from Scruffy, from ICT, from the Conscious Day Trader, from everyone else, and you just bring it together and you um, you test it and you build it. And slowly, 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 you find what works for you, for your psychology, your patience. And that's when you find consistency. There's no magic bullet, unfortunately. And can you remember like the the, the first sort of, uh, I suppose, let's call it strategy that you put together and you thought, well, let's try this out. I mean, how did you go about testing it and making sure that well, it, it does have an edge? I'm happy to to go forward with this. Well, very quickly, I knew that I couldn't be ICT um, because he has very tight stops. And with tight stops, um, you have to be extremely good at finding the best entry uh, because if you get five or six hits on tight stops, that seventh and eighth trade is very difficult to take. But he's obviously, he knows what he's doing and it works for his psychology and his 20 odd years of experience that he has, maybe more. Um, So I knew... I love the way he looks at entries, but I knew I couldn't do his risk management. And that's when I start combining a bit of what Scruffy does and a bit of what works for me. And I've now developed something that I call repositioning. Um, And it's basically, um, I don't know if you want to go into that, but uh, maybe we'll go into it later. (laughs) Repositioning. Well, what I'm sort of interested in defining out is like, were you able to like go, did you back test? a particular approach and see whether or not it worked? I generally forward test. So I'm, I'm, I like doing when I don't know something, I decrease size, but I want to, I want to feel the real deal. Like I don't want to back test, look at data because it's not realistic to my psychology. So I might be looking at it differently than I'm actually going to behave when it's live. So um, if I'm not sure about something, and when we talk about that repositioning approach, I won't reposition as much. I'll give a little bit more room to the price and I won't 
build a position so quickly that will expose me to the market. When I'm confident in a position, um, and let's say now, like for instance, now I'm running on half a year of green days, which is my absolute record. I've never had uh, um, um, like a, a results like that. And that has come from slowly building habits and habits and habits that work for me, uh, but always forward testing. All right, folks, I'm here at Black Bull Markets headquarters in Auckland, New Zealand. You can see this amazing view behind me of Auckland Harbour. Now, talking about views, if you do want to get free TradingView Pro, then you, all you need to do is trade one lot a month at Black Bull Markets, and they're going to give you free TradingView Pro. So, folks, to find out more, click the link in the description below or the card above. And so, so with the forward testing, you obviously had to sort of incorporate a time frame into that and a time of day and, you know, get it fitting around your family, your job. How did all that play out? What was your approach there? Um, I'm definitely, uh, I don't know if you know the terms, but London kill zone, which is pretty much pre-market until around 10 o'clock. Uh, you will normally find like a Judas move. ICT talks about a Judas move yep. and then a distribution of price. That's normally what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an extensive move. Um, so in good days, we might be done in like one or two hours. Um, it, with with my approach, because I allow some breathing room and I need to manage the trade, it can take five, six hours uh, to get my, my profits. And occasionally when there's like swan events or if there's um, last week was a very good example in the pound dollar. Um, where it absolutely skyrocketed after the news. And um, you can, if you're not prepared and you can manage that uh, trade, especially your drawdown and how you do with drawdown and repositioning, um, maximum uh, day trade, if it's the worst case scenario next day, close the positions. And so, so when you were like at the start, you obviously had a job that you were working as well. And London Kill Zone is London Open, so would have been. Was it? Were you in Bali at that point, or were you back in the UK? I couldn't trade uh, Kill Zones when I was at back at work because it was a full time job. Um, so I would say I wouldn't call myself even a part time trader because my priority wasn't in trading at the time. Uh, the way I transitioned out of it was I was able to go self employed. Um, because I was also doing strength conditioning. So I could choose my clients. And as I was getting better and better with trading, I was decreasing clients. And eventually um, the the money that I was making in trading was way outpaying uh, what I was doing. Uh, so it wouldn't it didn't make sense for me to do anything other than just sit in the charts. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So that's how you did it. So you managed to transition away from the full-time job and give yourself that time to be to be there. Um, to do the forward testing now, what what kind of confidence did you need to put behind the education that you had? Because you know, uh, I suppose there's a couple of factors at play there. One is you know, I, I don't know what sort of background you had on ICT at that point. So if you're fairly new, you may not have had a big background and known that he's been around for years. Uh, the other one is if you, uh, I suppose, yeah, just took that information for granted or at face value and sort of thought, okay, well, it's bound to work. And at some point in time, you felt less confident about it because you did, didn't work once. I mean, how did you get over that confidence hurdle? What was the key? I think it's huge. One of the biggest things is imposter syndrome. When you start doing well, you start questioning you're like, this is surely luck. There's no way I'm having five months of green days. Something's going to go wrong some point. And that's just your brain pushing you down in those habits that are your previous habits of failure, seeking failure. Because if you seek failure, you can normalize it. You're one of the, mm. well, the many. Why would I be one of the 1% of the world? Why am I special to be separated than these people? And you do that. Everyone does that. Um, and you do that on a daily basis. And I think one of the biggest factors that gave me the confidence, one was my wife, because she does a lot of mind-body practice. Mm. Um, a lot of manifestation of what I want in life. How can I get there? What, but not unrealistic things. Like how, what is the path? There's two types of manifestation. One is I want to be a millionaire and I don't know how I'm going to do it. And there's another one that's like, I'm going to be a millionaire and these are the paths and steps that I'm going to get there. Mm. And this is how long it's going to take me. And it works because then you start attracting things, people, 
software, whatever, uh, it, it comes into play and you, and you make it happen. And that consistency to answer your question came um, with my results, seeing the results day in, day out. Yeah. Um, and slowly, uh, because I, was, I didn't test the, the tight stops with the ICT approach, uh, because I knew I wouldn't be good at it. That, that was one of the reasons I, I wasn't good before was I wouldn't be able to take that extra trade when I've been hit seven, yeah. eight times. Yeah. I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, so, so really, I mean, it was all about confidence. And I think what you were saying was like the, the you know, you kept playing out the same thing and you just kept getting green days. At the end of it, obviously the stop was wide enough. So therefore you weren't getting, you know, were losing streaks that you had to try and overcome, which, you know, can turn a green day to a red day only because you don't want to take that last trade or you get out of it too early or whatever. Oh, it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, I suppose a ballsy approach compared to what a lot of other people do in terms of they will rather, you know, back test it and, and then go, okay, well now I feel confident to, to go and use it. But somebody coming in fresh, it might make a lot more sense to do it that way because you haven't got a lot clouding your judgment. You haven't done, you know, 25 courses and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, it makes, it makes sense. Okay. Right. Repositioning. What's, what is this thing you keep talking about? So repositioning, um, obviously Scruffy introduced me to his version of pound average, which he calls Scruffy madness. Um, repositioning, it's basically tweaking things that I've heard from other traders, uh, especially like the banking system where they never go in in one position. They just scale in. Mm. And there's a good reason for that because price never goes in one direction at first. It will just do its good old thing. And uh, the ICT traders know really well about liquidity draws and how algorithms go and take liquidity. So basing your, your full trade on your first initial entry to me, it doesn't make sense because that unless you're that sniper approach where you have this, uh, maybe ICT can do that, but you have this sense, the spider sense, Spider-Man sense where you can see like this is the time and it's going that, that way. I can't do that. So I need to know roughly where liquidity draw is and I need to be happy with some to take a trade, one even one tenth of a trade one, uh, when I'm breaking my depending on where I am on the charts, um, I normally do uh, either one fifth of my full position or one tenth, depending on my risk or what I think the price is going to do. And that is down to um, my original entry is down to how discounted is the price or premium is the price from the previous day. Um, and what I mean by that is if the previous daily high and low have been broken, by how much have they been broken? Is the price pushed way out of the norm? and it's uh, potentially going to come back to equilibrium. Um, that would be my original entry. And then I uh, i don't know, the people that follow my stream, I'm a bit crazy. I've, I've kind of converted that into the Age of Empires, and I'm using the uh, sort of like, I don't know if you've ever played Age of Empires. I've never, never played it. All right. So that's like a strategy game where you have All units, right. okay. and repositioning comes where you you throw like uh, – simple units on the front line and then suddenly the bigger units try to reposition them so they they go and save the units and they replace them and push the price forward right. uh, that's a little analogy on how price works but let's say we go in here and my second entry is here i don't worry about this trade i want this this position to take this out so then i'm decreasing risk and I'm getting a better price in a simplistic, um, simplistic way. Now, the big question that everyone asks, what happens if it goes in one direction and never comes back? That's why, obviously, you need to, uh, we, we won't have time to explain how that works. But in a nutshell, all you're doing is trying to reposition your worst entries for a better price. Okay. And so are you so you don't trade with a stop loss, is that is that my sort of assumption here? I, I do. Correct? Oh, you I do, do have a stop loss. Okay. So if it did go in forever in the other direction, then it'll hit your stop and take you out of all those positions. But at a lower average, overall average? Uh, again, again, it comes down to my performance. And yeah. that's why I say to everyone, if you're having five months of green days, I think you can afford a week. Uh, so <laughs> if, it, if, it's, if it's more loss than a week, I'm happy to kill it because I know I've got the backing of 
half a year of profits where I can go again and hit it next week and go forward. But what I do do, um, let's say I make two and a half K in a week. If I have profits on Monday, then that bracket can increase because my maximum risk I can risk in a, in a week is two and a half K. But if I've made another two and a half K, now my bracket is five K. Uh. So it, I can become a lot better at managing that week. So it gives me a little bit more bandwidth. Yes. Okay. So it is very much about sort of like a, a bucket of money that you're playing with to to work out how much you're going to risk per trade and you know you're willing to risk across the course of the week. Awesome. That that's a very different and unique approach. And I don't really think I hear about that kind of stuff on the show very much at all. Uh, and like tell us that sort of progress around the sort of finances around uh, you know personal capital and then funding capital how did that all happen um so uh, i am a, tr a funded trader from the uh, five percenters they're a prop firm um so i started with them as a challenge to see if i can be consistent uh and i started doing their what they call a boot camp challenge at the time they only had an 100k boot camp and you have to pass three challenges to, uh, giving back six percent and then suddenly they give you an 100k account which you can trade so i've grown that account now to 250,000 um and the next milestone is uh, i need another 5k and then they would give me 275 and every every 6% they increase that account with a maximum of 4 million with very good splits um at the moment they're giving me 75% of the profit and potentially when you get higher you get 100% which i think they just copy the accounts and you split the profits Right. Okay. So, so you managed to get to the, so you were consistent from the get go on that by just seeing if you're consistent, which is yeah, pretty, that, pretty phenomenal. I, I never, I never thought I'll be trading prop firm. I didn't really know what they were and I didn't, I didn't understand if they're actually going to pay me on time. Um, because when you want to do this, one of the biggest things about being funded and using, doing this as a full-time job, you want to know that the monthly is coming in and it's coming when you want it. Uh, so the delivery of money has been really good. I've extracted uh, 26,000 now um, from that account uh, in the last three and a half months. So, um, and it's been really quick. It's been very quick. And have you have you ever considered sort of, uh, I suppose, branching out to copy trades across to other accounts and like some of my past guests have done? Have you looked into that? I have just opened my second copier. Uh, with everything, I always forward test. <laughs> so this is another forward test where I am um, uh, I'm testing with the fivers. But if that count, because there's a there's a bit of nuance difference where they have like a three percent daily uh, limit, uh, where sometimes when you have a small account of two k, that three percent can be minute uh, or a twenty thousand a k compared to a 250,000. So there is a little bit of testing going on with copiers, but potentially maybe I'll open my own sort of funds and start uh, copying it from my main bootcamp account. Um, but yes, that's, that's, that's the one way where you can uh, escalate your income quickly. And it's like, I, I suppose, living in Bali, uh, does that help with, I suppose, the cost of living's lower, all that sort of stuff? Does that help with like, okay, well, I don't need to earn as much as like the normal Westerner or whatever, you know, it, is that a factor? But Bali is quite interesting because everyone says, you know, it's so cheap and you go over and you're like, you live like the king. However, uh, I'm still paying. Yes, I have a huge house with a huge pool and everything that I want. I'm still paying London prices, but I do get like the luxury lifestyle yeah. that I want right. in London is like a one bedroom in the center of Notting Hill or whatever. And you literally like crammed in, whereas in Bali, you have all the amenities, but you're still paying a lot of money to get that. It's not right. like it's extremely cheap. Tired of missing trades or spending hours at the charts? 
Introducing my Robot Builders Club. With our platform, you can build bots in minutes, not weeks, without any coding required. Get lifetime access to my video course, VIP community, and over 40 ready-made robots. Works with MT4 or MT5, and as a bonus, you'll get three months access to my Robot Lab, where we build and test bots on live calls every week. Join the hundreds of traders who are trading smarter, not harder. Click the link in the description to learn more, get the free training, and download a free robot. Yeah, you're not living in a shack and, and paying <laughs> 100 bucks a month. Okay. No. Okay. All right. All right. So, so, um, what else can you tell us about this this uh, approach that you've got with the Judas swing, like timeframes, uh, that kind of thing? So, for me, like a, how I trade every day, I will just open the charts and uh, I'll always add in the previous daily high and the previous daily low levels. And I'll put the equilibrium. And that would give me a quick glance of where the price is. Uh, is there interest in selling the price or is there an interest in buying the price? Uh, those are two main key areas. And that I'm very neutral on the day. My daily bias can change in the day, even in the hour, if there's a huge volatile uh, market. But when I'm in the trade, then my bias stays the same until obviously make the profit. Um, with, with the previous daily highs, uh, and daily lows, what I normally look for, I use ICT concept 2022. However, I've adapted it to myself. So uh, ICT will be talking about an OTE, which is an optimum uh, trade entry, which will be waiting for a break of structure, the price coming back, filling fair value gaps, and then continuing. Um, I don't wait for that because I can reposition that price. So I'm looking what everyone says, catching the falling knives. Yeah. I love the falling nice. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's obviously more capital on the table, well, more more trades on the table. Um, what what? So, are you able to sort of ever, or do you ever look at the stats around what you're doing? I, I, I'm hoping you do because you're an ex performance analyst. So, uh, like win rates, that kind of thing. I mean, do you have anything that you sort of think is quite useful to to use for yourself to go? Okay, well, I'm still tracking along. Yeah, I can show you my bootcamp uh, progress if you want. Um, it's I'm running at 70, 70 to 80 percent win rate, and the only reason there's a twenty percent is literally closing the trades um, because my profit's been hit. So if I've got a thousand profit and I've got uh, two positions that are in two hundred, then I'll close those two to make eight hundred dollars. So it's not a loss. So technically, it's a hundred percent win rate. Um, or if you take the dailies, uh, and um, it's been very linear. The the progress has been very linear. Hopefully, we'll be here another time in a few years' time, and I've broken all the records of being the most successful trader and a consistent trader. But we're manifesting that, and hopefully, uh, not hopefully, it will happen, yeah. <laughs> as they say. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, that, I mean, it sounds like because my next question was going to be, what's your risk to reward ratio? Which is probably not really the right question to ask because it sounds like once you're getting some positions in profit that are going to golf the, the ones that are now, you know, in a small loss, you're just getting out and going, well, I've made, I've made money for the day. I'm done. Um, that yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. I think that you've nailed that on the head because that's one of the biggest questions that someone who doesn't know about me comes and says, so you're on a negative risk reward. That doesn't make any sense. Well, it doesn't make sense if you read the textbook, um, and if you don't understand why I'm doing and how I'm, I'm very meticulous of what I do. I don't do it randomly. Uh, my, I, I wouldn't say I'm a day trader. I'm a, a position manager. <laughs> That's what I would call myself. Uh, so when I'm in a position, all I'm thinking about is what's the worst case scenario? How am I going to get um, a better price wherever I am? And that becomes my biggest target. Every day is a puzzle. And you try and um, decrease risk at any cost. As soon as you decrease the risk, then the profit just takes care of itself. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've tried this approach myself before, probably not exactly the same thing. And this was years ago. And it always starts off really well. And I'm like, oh, man, this is the way to go. We're going to make some money here. And uh, like after about four trades, the price never turns back. And then it's like, what do I do now? And I'll keep stacking and stacking and stacking. And I'm like, next minute I'm I've blown the account or something, you know, I've lost half the account or something like that. What would you recommend for somebody listening today if they were going to take this approach and maybe not follow you exactly what you're doing? 
Um, I know that's an option as well. What would you recommend to to try and make this work? I think there's there's two things. When you're at, you have to understand the market. The market moves like a wave, so it's like saying here comes a wave. That wave is never going to stop. That never happens in the market. Yes, we have occasional swan days where they go like two, three uh, standard deviations up. But if you always consider the three, four standard deviations away, then you're always going to be able to manage whatever size of the wave. So you the prob- the problem comes in when they they or, or all of us when we're trying to get our profits too quickly and where we're seeing movement and then suddenly that adrenaline rush comes in you're not trading from a, a logical position you're trading emotionally and suddenly you're stacking up positions you're not realizing how big of a side suddenly you have and your account is gone like that so you at all times um and on the streams that's when i because i try live every day on the streams that's the one thing that I always, I always say is, don't worry about if this is a good position to get in. Don't worry about the profit. Is it a position that you can get out? That's the most important mm-hmm. thing. Because yeah. yeah. if you can get out, the profit will come eventually. And so what well, I, I did listen to one of the streams, and I think you mentioned that you were sort of going, oh, like today I'm just after 500 bucks, or today I'm after a thousand bucks, or something like that. Is, so is that how you sort of look at your profit targets? Yeah, I think 50 pips is way more than, uh, it's, it's a big target on a daily. Uh, don't look at the lot because I only trade on a one lot, but my target is big. The only reason I trade on a one lot is because then I can increase that lot with my repositioning. Yeah. So I can, I can stack up to 10 lots, but it will be, it's not 10 lots of risk because it's spread out. So my 10 lot might be a five lot, even if I've got a 10 lot on. Um, because it might be break even at the time where I've added all my 10 positions. So, and that way, um, I'm looking to build through uh, the fibers at the moment, which they give me a bigger account and bigger account. So I don't need to rush the process. Um, but eventually when you hit the, the bigger numbers, like the millions on account, you can then start building your lot size a lot safer. So I never take all my money and profits out when I'm in a prop firm. I always build up a buffer because you never know what happens. Uh, I would love it to be all green days for the rest of my life, but who knows? <laughs> who knows what's coming? So again, like repositioning, plan for the worst. Yeah. Have a big buffer in the account. And so do you, Do you? Uh, I'm sort of trying to, trying to I, I can't quite picture exactly how you, how you do it. So I'm kind of struggling a little bit with, with trying to work out with right prop firm trading, this kind of approach, is there a risk of losing the account because the the risk just becomes too big with your 10 lots on, on yeah. trade? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the prop firm, well, I can only talk about the one I'm using. I don't know any other prop firms, but they have a hard stop where they will take your account away if you reach that number. So that's why I've started building a buffer because as you leave money into the account, mm, okay, obviously right. you have more drawdown. Yeah. So it might start with a drawdown or let's say 5,000. But if you've left 20,000 in there, you've got 25,000 you can play with. Um, and then as you, if you take 50% of your profits out and you're building that account, eventually you might have 100,000 in that account and it's a lot safer to to trade it. Uh, yeah. Um, Okay. So, so it's all right. And so it's not like a, what about a daily drawdown kind of thing that you might breach? Is that they, possible? They, they don't, don't have that on the boot oh, camp. They luckily, oh, they don't okay. have that. Oh, right. So maybe that, okay. Maybe that's the trick there then. So what about somebody who had like a much smaller account, say 10,000, if they were going to try this approach, what kind of lot size would you personally scale down to on your own account? If you had a $10,000 account? Is this without no restrictions on the 10,000? Without no restrictions, yeah. So say you just had like a 10 grand account, because I'm just trying to give people a perspective of, say you're 250, you've got a, a one lot trade, 10 lots max maybe. What 10 grand account, what kind of thing would you be thinking like, okay, on a 10, I might go with a... This is where I'm I'm very wary of giving a generic thing because every individual trader is different. So someone might need a very small lot size because he's not being able to to deal with those drawdowns someone else who's more calm more patient might be able to increase that lot side a little bit but he will be very strong and killing the trade when it when it needs to kill it so i think it's very individual but as a generic sort of 
um, a rule, I always start from looking at the before, previous performance. What, what have you passed? What, what have you leveled up to? Are you, are you returning 1,000 a week? Are you returning 500 a week? If you're returning 500 a week, is it logical to risk 2,000? Probably not. That, that account's going to be blown up very quickly. But if you're making, let's say, two to $300 a week, doesn't it make sense to risk about $50? $50, because then that's a lot very easy to recover. And slowly, as you're making more profit and you're proving yourself that you can make more profit, when you're re making 1000 then start risking a little bit more, a little bit more. And then suddenly, without you knowing and focusing on the process, that account has become a lot bigger. It's interesting. Now, I'm going to go hypothetical here. And um, just for the, just for, I suppose, by interest, if anything, <laughs> So if you were to say say you didn't have this repositioning technique in place and you were just to trade with a fixed stop loss and a fixed take profit, what do you think the difference would be? Personally for me, you mean? But for you, yeah. For what you've done over the last five, let's say five months where you've had all green days, what do you think the difference would, what, what would it look like? And the, I know you're, you're just guessing to, because it's, it's you're, you're talking to an analyst here. So yeah. Yeah, I can only, I can order forward test. I can do a test for you and then I'll come back to you. But um, the, the reason I stayed away from it is because I don't want psychology to have a huge impact when I'm making decisions that are based on logic. So if I have a stop loss that's constantly being hit, I have to deal with a lot of demons from my from back in my head oh, where God. they're saying, okay, this is another stop loss being hit. This is another stop loss being hit. Well, what, why, why do you even think this is going to work out? This does? And then you miss that good one. And then suddenly you've got another five bad stop right. losses. Right. So I, I, I don't know. I have to forward test it. But I, I think having the flexibility to constantly analyze and adapt and that's why I brought the uh, strategic uh, game. It's like, it's like chess. Every day you go onto, onto the charts. You don't know what the move is going to be. So you have to adapt every day differently. You can't just always do the, the put the mm. pawn forward the same way because that strategy might not work today. So you constantly have to be able to adjust. So the tighter the stop, the less time I have to adjust. So I need to see what the market is. Is it doing 30 pips in a few hours? Is it doing 100 pips in a few hours? That's two different days. You can't trade them the same. So you need to understand what's happening on a daily basis. Well, personally, for me, I'm talking. Yeah. Okay. So so it's, it'd be very hard for you to determine whether or not like the, the strategy you're using, if you had had a stop, would have been profitable because you probably wouldn't even take in the profit. Like at the outside of entry sometimes and you wouldn't even know. Okay. All right. So very hard question to answer. Now, what about symbols that you're trading instruments? What, what markets are you focused on now? This is the most boring. This is where everyone leaves. <laughs> I'm the most, I'm the most boring trader you can find. I only trade one pair. I trade the pound dollar and uh, I don't trade anything else. I also look at the DXY. So the, the, the dollar index, because that kind of gives me confluence and I see what the dollar strength is compared to the other pairs. And that's the two things that I look every single day. I get a lot of people on the streams like, show me gold, show me euros, oh, yeah. show me this. And I'm yeah. like, I don't want to distract my brain with any other information. Yeah. And and of the guys on the streams that follow you and stuff, are they are they finding success? Do, you, do they are they trying to do what you do? Or what what's the feedback and thoughts about people viewing? This is the crazy thing. Like I uh, I always say to everyone on the stream, like, don't copy me because it's not going to work. But they are taking things that I'm like the repositioning approach, uh, psychology stuff that I talk, and they're making it their own. And that's the most beautiful thing is they send me pictures, but they're making more money than me because they're like, I don't know how, how long they're going to do that, but <laughs> they are making a lot more money than me and uh, bigger accounts. And they're saying, you know, this is crazy. Uh, and they, the best, the best feeling in the world when you know, you've changed people's life. That is, I can't, I can imagine ICT sitting there feeling really, really good when yeah. you know 1.4 million have seen his uh mentorship so oh, even if he's Gosh. even if it's uh changed like 10 percent of of that i've changed people's life that's huge yeah. huge yeah um like i mean it's it's it sounds like uh you know I, I don't know if we really touched on it but i know that you did this in quite a short period of time like went from learning that 
people do trading. <laughs> I obviously knew, but uh, and then uh, what's the name? Gary Scruffy, ICT to getting funded, passing funding challenges, and now doing it full time, all within like what two years was it? Two and a half years. Yeah, yeah, two and a half years, which is which is ridiculously quick, uh, and. So I want to dive in and sort of get some, you, you touched on it before, some mindset kind of things that you do personally that other people might be able to take on board and help them. Um, one of the biggest things, and this is where my uh, my wife comes in, into play, is uh, thoughts. Thoughts have a huge impact on the body, um, huge impact on how we go about doing things. And what thoughts, choosing thoughts is something new to me. That's something that I, I could choose to think of the negative about situation, or I can, I can choose to believe that I'm not going to make it. I'm not good enough. That is a choice. We can stop that thought. And uh, there's a practice called like redirection where, when you have the negative thought coming in, stop it within the millisecond that it comes in and replace it with something that you want. Um, so for instance, let's say I open the charts and suddenly I'm, I'm feeling doubt. I want to stop that doubt. I want to stop that thought. And it takes practice. It's not easy to stop a thought when you've done it for five, six years, or even not your whole life. And you should replace it with something that's going to bring you more value and it's going to make you a better trader. Um, that takes time and, uh, repetition, repetition, mm -hmm. fake it till you make it. Keep telling yeah. yourself, um, you know, that I am a consistent trader. Uh, I am a consistent trader because I'm putting in the work. I'm doing this every single day. Um, I've spent over 5,000 hours on the charts. You know, there's no reason why I'm not going to make it work. That's different language of saying, I've wasted 5,000 on the charts. I'm jumping from strategy to strategy. I don't even know what I'm doing. Why have I turned the screen on? How are you feeling if you listen to that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's a great little tip, I think. Like, basically... You've got a choice of the thoughts that you put in your mind. So, and stop them as soon as you get a negative one, stop it uh, and re, re, reposition and repurpose. Was it redefine? Redefine it? Which one? The repositioning? Or? No, the, the, uh, I wrote it down. I can't read my writing here. Re, repurpose it or redefine it? Oh, redirect. Or redirect. redirect. Sorry, I couldn't even read my writing. I just scribbled it down. Okay, look. Um, we're going to jump into a quick fire round here, but before we do, I want to want you to give us a, like um, one thing would, you'd recommend a retail trader spend the next month mastering to I want to say just to 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 get get funded. Um, the biggest thing is grab a piece of paper and put down your super strength. What is that super strength? Is it for me? For instance, is patience. I'm very very patient. Um, and I'm extremely fast learner. If you throw something uh, to me, I love learning. Those are the two things. I am not strong on other things. And I, it doesn't mean that I need to neglect them. I put my energy into the strength, which then feeds my weakness. That is the biggest tip I can give to anyone. And it's helped me is a lot of traders out there don't know what their strength is. And they're trying to copy other, other traders' strength. Find what is good, what's working for you, and bottle it put it away, save it, and bring it up every day when you're trading. Uh, and that's going to make you a better trader. Awesome. Another great tip there, guys. Right. Now, um, let's go through these quick fires. How long did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable? I would say two years. Uh, what's your favorite entry setup? Um, so my favorite setup will be an ICT sort of setup where it's breaking previous daily highs. Price has a lot of volume, uh, so there's an expansive move, and uh, it's running out of steam, as we say. And then I will look for, I'm always reversing the price. I'm always looking for that um, retraction of the price after a huge move. So and, sorry, entry, to finish that, entry would be, um, it, it's almost like what everyone doesn't like doing, finding, trying to hit, take the tops and the bottoms. But that's where repositioning helps with managing those tops and bottoms. And what about, and I don't know if you can easily answer this question, but strategies to exit your trades? Strategies to? What, what's your, what strategies do you use to exit your trades? Oh, to exit. Um, repositioning. <laughs> so uh, the strategy is I, I don't really, 
I, I need to, I, I want to get in a trade where I'm happy, even if it goes against me and it's a horrible entry. If I can justify it, that means I can exit that trade. If it's a good position to get in, um, I am willing to, um, to get out. What I don't want to do uh, when I'm managing trades is just to lead with profit. So let's say, you, like you mentioned earlier, I want to make $500. Um, I don't want to go into the trade. This is a good position because my profit is there and that can be hit very easy. I don't want that. What I want is this is my worst entry that when I get in. So now my exit is going to give me my money. I don't care about the first entry, even though sometimes it works out. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's a great psychological little trick there. What about a recommended book or resource? Oh, there's so many, so many. Um, doesn't need to be trading because uh, uh, I think the, the resources probably we've mentioned them already. So it doesn't need to be I, trade. Maybe I, not I would trading. Definitely, I would definitely say anything around uh, mind. Uh, what's the book? Think and Grow Rich. Uh, that's a great book. Um, manifestation book, Mark Douglas books. Um, anything that will improve yourself as an individual and bring you closer to understanding what are your attributes that are required for you to become a consistent trader. What's your preferred broker and trading platform? Look, folks, I know you want the answer to this question. Which broker is this trader using? Now, the answer has been sponsored by Black Bull Markets. So to find the answer out, you're going to need to go over to tradingnut.com, find the show notes page for this guest, and then all will be revealed. Now, what about um, if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, don't try and copy traders. Learn from traders, but become your own trader. That is the the one goal that I have. And that is the one thing that I can tell you is being the most consistent thing, made me the best the best trader that I could be. Brilliant. Well, look, um, it is, and it is actually uh, something that I think is, I've not necessarily heard it on a lot of shows before, but people allude to it. And those that don't, I mean, I don't know why they don't, but I mean, that's sort of where I've come to the fall as well. Like you need to do something that's going to work for you. Um, but learn from others, you know, just don't try and copy them. Right. Before we wrap up, what's the best way for traders to get hold of you? Uh, on YouTube is the Conscious Day Trader. I trade live every London Open, trying to do some New York, but uh, it, living in Bali, 2 p.m. is a good time for me to be live. Uh, the afternoon, eight o'clock, we're putting the baby to bed. So <laughs> that's the YouTube. Then the Instagram uh, on the Conscious Dot Day Trader not the fake ones, is the dot in between. Okay, well, look, a big thank you to Yanis for sharing with us today. Uh, everything we've discussed here, along with all those links, will be in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Yanis in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. All right, folks, there you have it. Well done for sticking around to the end. Now, because you did, I'm going to tell you about the review that came through on the channel this week. Now, I did a call out for everyone that stuck around to the end, and somebody obviously listened. So this uh, this came from Cassie96. They, uh, they came back with a five-star review saying, this was an awesome show. I absolutely love this show great way to discover talented traders that can potentially become a mentor finding the motivation to keep trading while going through the many hardships along the journey or opening your eyes to so many different trading avenues one can take so thank you cassie for the review if you guys do want to put a review in the podcast on apple it does a tremendous amount of benefit for the show uh it helps us get guests on all that sort of stuff so folks you know where to go if you're on the podcast and it doesn't matter what podcast thing you're listening to and I'll try and grab those reviews and read them out here in the future. All right, enough from me. Remember, we've got those live streams hitting the channel. We've got the Robot Builders Club if you want to join that and we've got future guests coming up and that video from Yanis. So please stay tuned. We'll see you in the next one.